Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. For today's video, we're going to take a look at um, DuPont connectors and specifically the crimping process. Uh, a thing I want to get clear right away at the start of this, even though I'll be mentioning a brand name and uh, going to Amazon to show you where I got it, I'm not getting any kickbacks or payouts or anything like that for it. No uh, uh, commissions or nothing like that. It's just my observations with this tool. So hopefully you'll trust me on that. Uh, furthermore, I'm really not recommending the tool as much as I am recommending the type of tool. Hopefully that'll make sense throughout this presentation. Uh, I myself historically never really worked a lot with DuPont connectors, uh, just hasn't been my thing. Ribbon cables, IDC, that sort of stuff I was more familiar with. Uh, but more recently I'm getting more into the comfort level of using DuPont connectors and jumper wires. Now a lot of them come in, uh, you can buy them pre-assembled in certain lengths and I use those wherever I can. Sometimes I get into situations where I want a custom length and that's where having a crimping tool really comes in handy. Now. If you've been uh, following the channel, you'll know that I, I'm running the Zoom Town experiment where I'm going to have 16 little robots running around uh, pretty much over in this area behind me. And uh, those require an awful lot of wiring and so forth. And that's what kind of prompted me to look further into uh, a better way of crimping DuPont uh, pins for the little connections. I bought this pair on the left. It was part of a DuPont connector kit. I bought, I don't even remember how long ago it was. We'll just say it was a very long time ago, within the last decade, maybe a little longer. Uh, it, it turns out these really are, they work. I've been able to get them to work for all this time. Not that I've used it a lot, but the problem is they really do a terrible job of crimping. And so the other day, uh, I was getting into uh, preparations for wiring up uh, the remaining, let's see, get both of these in camera view here, the remaining 14 of these. And as you can see, lots of header connections and all that. Now luckily, through the, through the design, uh, I was able to get most of the jumper wires at the correct length, but there's still some custom ones that I've got to do. So. Uh, nonetheless, I wanted it to be a better, more efficient, more reliable process than what I was using. I found these on YouTube, or not on YouTube, on Amazon. And uh, right away I recognized their advantage. And how I found these, uh, well, unfortunately, the same way I found these, um, was I searched for uh, DuPont crimper. And uh, when I bought these, it was a DuPont crimp kit, something to that effect is what I search for. This time I just search for a DuPont crimper, crimping tool. And I've popped onto this one and I looked at it and uh, right away I noticed some things about it here in the jaw area uh, and I was hoping the real tool would be as good as the pictures were showing. Let me show you that on the Amazon page here. This is the tool. Uh, it's 2229 free shipping if you're prime and all that happy stuff. Uh, it's suitable for essentially uh, DuPont jumpers, uh, which is what they're saying right here, but it's also capable of three different sizes, and the smallest size is really what you'd use for your uh, DuPont jumpers. Up above, they're showing it works for the little Molex type, the flat uh, pin. The DuPont connectors, which is the one in the middle, what I'm talking about. And notice they're saying AWG 28, 28 gauge. And I actually work with thicker wires more often than not. And I was surprised that this actually works pretty good even for the thicker wires. And then it also works for Amphenol Mini PVs. Uh, let's go on to the next thing. It has ratcheting control. Let me demonstrate that real quick. If you're not familiar with that, you start squeezing the handle 
and you'll hear it clicking. You can let go of it and it'll stay in that position and that's important for the process of crimping with this type of tool. You have an adjustment here for tensioning or increasing or decreasing the amount of force that goes into it. And then in here is a release. And that allows you to open it back up should you need to back out of a crimping process. One of the things with DuPont connectors, or most crimping uh, crimp connections, you'll have a conductor area tab that needs to be crimped securely on the conductor and then you have these wraparound guys that need to go around the insulation. Now I found out that even with uh, uh, when I crimp with the larger gauge wire, 20 gauge wire, I didn't even need to include the insulation and it was still a very sturdy and very uh, uh, pull apart resistant crimp. It was very, very good with these connect or crimping, crimping tools. But this is the ideal look of what you're after, especially if you're working with the smaller gauge wires. Now they're showing 22 gauge here, and you could probably get that. For me, it was hard to get a 20 gauge uh, to look quite like that without a little bit of finesse. And I'll bet you this wire here is closer to the 28 gauge that they're showing uh, in the image. Operations, very simple. You cut off your little male or female header or a, a DuPont pin. Strip off, they say, a certain length of wire, about 4 millimeters, 3 sixteenths of an inch to 5 millimeters. Uh, a little over 200 thousandths of an inch. Um, they're closer to almost a quarter inch is what you strip off and frankly all throughout the years of crimping different connectors I just found uh, going by eye will often work good once you get the hang of it for that particular crimping tool. Uh, then you're going to put the uh, connector on the wire by squeezing the handles until it releases automatically. And there's a little technique in that and we'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, and then you slide the pin which would here we're seeing the male pin, or you would slide uh, the female socket into the header uh, housing or DuPont housing, and you've got your crimped wire. Upon receiving them after purchase, I looked them over. Um, what I was mostly concerned with, and we're probably not going to get a real good image out of this, it's going to fight me on it, but was the surface finish here in the crimping dies. Now, uh, those need to be very smooth, very polished, so to speak, and well-formed. A lot of these uh, inexpensive crimp tools just use stampings, and they don't form well because the surfaces here are so rough. But as you can see, these actually look pretty good. They're replaceable dies, so you can actually take them out, replace them with a different type of die, uh, I'm not sure what else uh, or what other types of dies they offer for this particular gripping tool. The brand name is Iwis, I think. I'm not sure. I think they're trying to play off the name of Swiss, trying to incorporate that into the naming. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, it, it's an interesting name, but I got to say it looks like very good quality tools. And again, that's about. Uh, with the importance focused on the dies, the business end of this device. DuPont connectors come in all varieties. You get uh, a variety of number of holes on them, single row, double hole, double row on the housings. Uh, they can go down to just literally uh, a housing for one pin, uh, two pins, three, etc., all the way up. Uh, I, I don't know, I think the most I've got is about a I think it's about a 40 pin uh, DuPont connector uh, and, and you can buy them of course. The, the wires can come prefabricated like so. They uh, often have very stiff wires, the prefabricated ones like this, very stiff wires. Uh, and to me that's a sign of a lower quality. I have learned that 
when you go with the silicone wires, which is one that we'll be demonstrating how I uh, crimp this one, that's 20 gauge. Uh, there are jumper wires using this, and they're of a much higher quality. Of course, you got to pay a lot more for it, too. These are more suitable for on a breadboarding or a prototyping, but when you get into this type of assembly where you need reliability, I found a lot of failure points with this type of DuPont jumper. But you can get the housings and the pins, male and female, and housings for any combination you can dream up, it seems like. These are what the pins look like. This is what the female pin looks like. You can see the areas where there is the conductor crimp area and then the insulation crimp area or the tabs that fold over. Here is a male pin with the same combination of conductor crimp area and then insulator crimp area. Looking at the tool in a little more detail and a little closer up, you can see that on each of the dies, they're uh, looking through it, so to speak, you'll notice that there's this step right down the middle of the dies where it seems like half of it's smaller than the other half of it. And that is an important part of this, and that is also an indicator of how you put the pin in there when you go to crimp. But what really sets this one apart is when you get your uh, crimp pin loaded into the crimping pliers, it'll hold it in there because it'll ratchet into place and it'll hold the pin there and then you insert the wire. Now the trick is that you want to get uh, just a minimal amount of hold on it so you don't crush the crimp pin itself, making it harder to get the wires in. Now, if you compare this style to my older style, you'll notice how much uh, thinner the old style is, or my old type of crimp crimpers. And frankly, I don't even think they're correct for DuPont, but as I mentioned earlier, that's what came with the kit when I bought it years back. The newer one seems to take into account that one part of this will be crimping the uh, conductor portion and the other side will be crimping the insulator side of our connector and that will make a much better and ultimately a flatter uh, uh, crimp operation. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate. Now I've already uh, cut the wire. Uh, we'll start out using 20 gauge uh, silicon jacketed uh, insulated stranded wire which is the hardest to do with a DuPont because the insulation is very large and uh, the conductor has very fine wires in it and getting those twisted to stay twisted until you get it inserted can be a little bit of a challenge. But first off, uh, you'll notice that when you put the crimp pin in there, the wings that are going to fold around the insulation area, you'll draw those through until they catch on that different surface there, that edge that's midway through the jaw. You'll pull back at that, then you'll close the crimp pliers till it just has enough friction to hold them into place or to hold that conductor in place. Next up, you'll take your wire and then you feed it in through the opening in the crimp jaw there. Takes a little bit of practice and you kind of have to learn a feel for it. You'll probably once you get a pair of pliers like this, just plan on practicing 20-30 crimps until you develop the feel so you know when the insulation passes through the two tabs that will be eventually grip on the insulation. You just need the, the stuff to pass through there. Squeeze the pliers tight and you'll have a nice straight crimped pin. Uh, mentioning earlier, the other pliers that I used, the crimping operation would actually bend the pin in the area uh, right where you're doing all the crimping, which made it extremely difficult to insert into the housing. With these crimp pliers, you don't see that nearly as much. In fact, they're almost always a good, clean crimp leaving a nice straight pin in that crimp area. 
From there, inserting the pin into the housings, just a matter of finding the little flexible tab and looking at the pin itself, and you'll see the area where the tab, that little flexible plastic tab, is going to catch onto the back side of the pin, and you insert the pin or the socket through the large hole until it finally engages on that tab or that little piece of plastic. And then you try to pull it apart, and as you can see, I can pull really hard on this connection and it is not breaking free. I went through and tried a couple of other combinations uh, with the 20 gauge silicone jacketed wire and I did a couple without crimping any of the insulation just crimping on the conductor with both uh, areas of the header pin or of the crimp pin and then also with the insulation put them into the header socket, tried to pull them apart, and they both performed very good uh, without any concern of pulling apart. And frankly, if you're pulling on them as hard as I was, you're not using or uh, working properly with header pins. So you should never have to pull on them that hard. I then went about, I cut apart a uh, uh, inexpensive prefabricated a set of jumper wires, uh, cut them, stripped them back, and then crimped them uh, both uh, with just the wire and with the wire and the insulation being crimped. And because those are 28 gauge, they might be 26, uh, it uh, didn't work nearly as well with just uh, crimping only on the conductor portion. You have to get a hold of the insulation jacket to have a much more secure crimp operation. All in all, I'm pretty pleased with these crimping pliers. Um, I was actually not expecting them to be as high a quality as I received, so that was a pleasant surprise. I still need to develop the technique to work with them efficiently and more comfortably. I suspect uh, with these 14 remaining Zoomy robots, I'm going to get pretty proficient working with them. I don't have any um, thing really negative to say about it uh, at this time because I just don't have enough experience with it getting comfortable manipulating them, etc. It'd be way too pre premature to even make a statement like that with only using them to crimp maybe 20 or maybe 30 wires here as I'm tinkering around trying different techniques and so forth. The technique is important though in order to get the feel of how you put the, the connector pin in there, start closing the pliers, and then pull down until they catch on that step in the middle of the jaw. Then give it one more click on the crimp plier to hold it in place. Then, of course, it gets very finical in trying to thread the wire into the hole. Uh, my bad eyes, it's not a, an easy task. Really good lighting will help immensely. And, of course, having it up where you can see it close. A lot of what I was filming here was underneath my overhead camera, which only gives me about a foot of distance between the camera and the top of the workbench, and I'm doing all that work in between, and it's almost at arm's length away from my face. So it, if I looked really awkward, that was more of what had to do with it than the actual tool itself. Uh, but I'm going to wrap it up with this. I think I've got a good tool. Uh, it hopefully will make life a lot easier when I go through and wire up the remaining 14 of these guys uh, for our Zoom Town experiment. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.